Beers with Chad. Hey everybody, what is up? Chad Wesley Smith here. A uh, Another episode of Beers with Chad. It's uh, been a good day here. Made a bunch of YouTube content working on a new series on addressing weak points. So I was working hard on that with Shorty and Marissa. Uh, two jujitsu classes. Um... Everything was a you know was a very good day except for the the Rams were kind of getting their ass kicked in the their first preseason game but otherwise it was a good day for me hopefully it was a good day for all of you uh, this week's episodes of the Jug Life and Beers with Chad are brought to you by Purple uh, Purple uses all kinds of awesome technology to make very comfortable mattresses uh, seat cushions all sorts of stuff like that you can get a free sheet set and free um, mattress pad at purple.com slash jug life and support the show by doing that. So if you're in the, in the market for a new mattress, please do that. Tonight I'm drinking this Teller Pills by Vault Brewing Company. Vault is from Yardley, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a 4.9% Pilsner. Very nice at the end of a hot, long day here in California. Um, a bold, unfiltered American Pilsner scored a 3.71 on Untapped, and I got this through an app called Tabor. And uh, Tabor is a it's really easy app on your phone. Flat rate shipping. They send you just push notifications for all these different kinds of of uh, beers. You rate them. They kind of develop a taste profile from you for you from there. You get beers from all over the country. Stuff that you couldn't buy locally at your store or maybe that you've never even heard of. And uh, that just shows up to your door. Easy as that. Cheers. <clears throat> that is good. So if you want to sign up for Tavor, you can go through the link in my profile or the link in the video info and check them out. This week on the Juggernaut YouTube, our Jug Life episode was a live episode, or filmed in front of a live studio audience, from our recent trip to Texas. We were at Arlington Strength with our friend Danny Rivera, done a couple of events uh, with Danny and, and Arlington Strength, great group of people there, put on a little squat clinic, and then I talked about um, exercise selection based on phase, based on goal, based on weakness for the squat. Max and I answered questions from uh, all kinds of people in attendance. We were just hanging out, having a good time, so go and check that one out. Uh, I had a strength history minute with John. I always say cuck, but I'm not 100% sure that that's actually how you pronounce his, his last name of K-U-C. Um, and he's really one of the most underrated lifters uh, from that, that 70s time period, um, 2350 total monster lifter, but doesn't get quite the same uh, publicity of a John Cole or Don Reinhout, Bill Kazmaier types. And then on Saturday, we will begin our Pillars of the Jerk series, and Max will be teaching you how to uh, improve the most missed lift in weightlifting, the jerk. So number one will be coming out there. Um, next week, two very big things happening next week. Uh, first, on Tuesday... Pre-sale will begin for the bench manual by me. Uh, a couple months ago, we re I released the squat manual. Now the bench manual is coming out. That's going to cover equipment, warm-ups, technique, um, exercise selection to address different weak points, programming considerations to help you figure out your MRV, uh, what intensity you should be training at, what frequency you should be training with, and includes a couple different programs. Then at the end of the week, myself, Max, Mike, Quinn, and James, Dr. James Hoffman, will be on Long Island for the Juggernaut Performance Summit. So uh, there's you can still sign up for that through the link in my profile, through the link down in the video info. Uh, we'll be covering really all the stuff that you need to, uh, to train better and be a better coach. Uh, program design, technique, mentality, recovery, mobility, all that good stuff. So if you're in the greater Northeast area, please uh, come check it out. It'll be a information-packed day, plus you can get CEUs for the NSCA. So what I want to talk about today, uh, I put up a couple posts asking, asking for topics and everything, and one post that stood out to me 
was uh, about marketing and how to stay true to your brand. So, so I'm not a big meme guy, but I actually am going to start this out with a meme reference only because it was posted by the GOAT, Ed Cohen. And Ed posted a meme, or some would call it a meme. I won't tell you who pronounces it that way. And he said, beware of people who brag about who they are. A lion will never tell you he's a lion. Of course he won't, because lions can't talk. But I think what this really gets uh, to the heart of, and I, I saw it and it actually resonated with me a bit, and said that you need to show people who you are, what you are, rather than telling them who you are or what you are. And this is something that that I take, uh, you know, really seriously in the way that I try and present Juggernaut uh, on the interwebs and uh, in, in everything that we do. I've been doing, I've been running Juggernaut for nine years, I actually. Um, a couple days ago on Facebook, got a Facebook memory of the, of the day that we got our keys to the first warehouse, the first gym. Um, and, and that's what, and nine, nine years ago, uh, nine years and a couple days now we've been doing this. And that whole time, you know, my, my degree is in history. I, I am a lifter, a coach. I was a shot putter. I, I'm not a marketer and I'm not even necessarily a great businessman by, by any stretch. But I've been doing this for nine years, and, and in doing that, I've done it under the assumption of the simplest marketing, marketing strategy that I can think of. Have the best product. That, to me, is, is the simplest and should be the most effective marketing strategy there is. If you are a coach, be the best coach. If you are you know, sharing content, share the best content. But it's not quite as simple as that. And a lot of it, I think, kind of goes to the meme that Ed posted is beware of people who brag about who they are rather than just showing you who they are and what they're about. So if the simplest marketing strategy is just being the best, having the best product, being the best in your field, how do you know who is the best or what is the best as a, as a consumer? You know, for me, being so entrenched in, in what I do, coaching, powerlifting, having competed for for a long time, been in the world of, of training athletes of, of all different levels and, and different sports, it's fairly easy for me to, to look at, you know, everyone in the marketplace and make, you know, maybe in some cases, snap judgments or incorrect judgments, but have a pretty good grasp of... Uh, you know, who really knows what they're doing, who's, who's walking the walk rather than just talking the talk, you know, to throw another cliche in here with, uh, with my, with my meme reference already. But as I look into, to other industries, places that I'm not as familiar with, where I'm not an expert myself, um, it's, it can be harder to, to assess where I found myself, uh, kind of in this, in this same situation was I maybe been doing jujitsu for two or three months and I started listening to an episode of, of Joe Rogan podcast. You know, I'm, I'm just starting off jujitsu. I'm all excited about about it. Want to learn more? And he has this guy named John Donahair on his uh, on his podcast. And I start listening, and man, I'm like, man, this sounds really great. Pretty technical language, things that you know I didn't know that much about jujitsu. So he could have been saying anything, and I probably would have would have bought it and thought this guy is the best ever. And I'm about an hour into this, you know, two and a half, three hour episode like Joe Rogan does. And I, I then text my, I, I kind of catch myself and, and text my, my professor, Brent Littell, and, and ask him, I was like, hey, Brent, like, is this guy good? Like, does he actually know what he's talking about? Or do I just not know enough to know that he doesn't know what he's talking about? And of course, Brent told me that, that yes, like he coaches all these, these good guys and, and but on the surface, I didn't have an enough, you know, kind of prior knowledge to be able to, to generally, to, to necessarily assess that for myself. And since then, I've, I've started reading more John Donahire stuff, listening to everything I can. And obviously, fantastic jujitsu ju coach. I've been trying to get him on the podcast. So John Donahire, in the off chance that you're listening to this Beers with Chad, I'm going to be in New York next week. So uh, let's, let's record an episode. 
But I I found that it, that as not someone who's that deeply entrenched in it and an expert in the field myself, it was very hard to assess if someone just talks a great game or if they're really backing it up. So in the in terms of you know, coaching for powerlifting and weightlifting and, and creating content and the stuff that, that we do and that I, that I market, even though a lot of times I don't even feel like I necessarily market it. Like, yeah, we run ads on Facebook and I make posts about it and I guess that's marketing, but it's, it's maybe not as strategic as it should be. But I think it should, it should come back to this simplest marketing strategy of having the best product. So how do you tell that someone is the best? They should be showing you that quality with helpful content and with coaching results. So, you know, as as a consumer of this type of stuff, I would encourage you to to question when you watch stuff, when you watch Juggernaut stuff, are you being educated or are you being entertained? Entertainment is important, of course, but do not confuse the two ideas that even though someone may make you laugh, even though someone may you know, have a flashy, flashy editing or whatever it is. Are you watching the video and taking away useful information to help yourself improve, to help your athletes improve if you're a coach? So once you ask yourself that question, are you being educated? Or are you being entertained? The next question is, if they're a coach, are the results they're producing good and real? It is shocking to me some people, and I don't want to get into naming names in this, but people who are held up as like gurus of powerlifting. And if you were to ask them the most simple question that a powerlifting coach could be asked, who is the best lifter that you've ever coached? I think the results would be shocking for many of these people. And maybe there's one person that they can name, but who's the three best or the five best? And if you've been doing this for a long time and you're a big name who's going to be attracting talented lifters, that should be a pretty simple answer. And I think that there are people that if it was asked to them, they would take offense to it because they wouldn't have a good answer. So that's something to to take into account. Are they producing meaningful results? And in if they're powerlifting and weightlifting coaches, are they producing those results in a meet setting? That is the sport of powerlifting. No one gives a shit about the football coach who gets his guys to practice the best if they don't go and win games at the end of the week. No one cares or should care about a powerlifting or weightlifting coach who has 12 weeks of someone producing training PRs and then can't do it in competition. Especially because the the world of social media allows these these things to be framed in such a way that like maybe they compete in a given weight class, but you know, they weigh four kilos over that for a sport with, uh, for something with two hour weigh-ins. So then they try and cut weight and they lift like shit, but they, maybe they don't even ever post the actual meat result. They just let you kind of live off those good training results. So those are things you need to question. The, maybe the most shocking, one of the most shocking ones to me ever was I, I saw a post of a lifter and it's, it said, you know, matches the 52 kilo IPF world record. And that's the class Marissa competes in, a training lift doing this for another lifter. And, I, and we kind of looked at each other like, whoa, who is, who is this person? We've, we've never heard of them. You know, if someone's doing big things in that class, we usually kind of know who they are. So I click on some things, and then it's revealed that they actually weighed 56 kilos in the training. And I was like, oh, okay, like I'm not threatened by this by this person, you know, coming in and, and challenging us in a meet. And then, because we were stuck in uh, traffic at the time in an Uber in, in Austin, Texas, well, let's Google some meat results here. But there were none to be found. And the, the post, you know, said equals the, the IPF world record in the 52s. Can't wait to see this happen in a meet. I was like, well, okay, well, we'll see it happen. I shit you not, one year later, I see the exact same post with the exact same caption. Blah, 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 squats whatever weight to equal the 52 kilo world record. 
Can't wait to see them do it in a meet. It, it didn't say TBT. It didn't say Flashback Friday. It was presented as if it had just happened. Not only had the squat record been raised since then, so it no longer equaled the IPF world record in the 52s, it was still done by someone weighing 56, not 52. I then again looked for meet results one year after the post that said, can't wait to see them do it in competition. And again, I came up empty handed. <laughs> that is the kind of thing that as a consumer, as a, as a fan, as, as a lifter, as, as someone who's trying to learn and improve, you need to be aware of, you need to be wary of. So I strongly, strongly encourage you stop and think are people who are telling you that they're great coaches and trying to help people, are they actually supporting that with their words and their actions, the people they coach and the content that they produce? So that's a little rant from me about marketing, the way that this gets marketed. Like I said, I'm, I'm not a business expert. I'm not a marketing expert. I try and do the simplest, what to me seems like the simplest marketing strategy, which in my opinion, I wish it was the most effective. I don't think that it is. It's producing the best content and producing results with athletes consistently. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're going to keep trying to do. This was Beers with Chad. Um, make sure to check out purple.com slash jug life to support the shows. If you're interested in getting delicious beers like this Teller Pills, from Vault Brewing Company in Yardley, Pennsylvania, or any other kind of great beers from all around the country delivered right to your door, check out Tavor through the link in my profile or in the video info. Next week, my bench manual comes out. You can learn how to warm up better, better technique, exercise selection to address your weak points, programming ideas from MRV to frequency, plus three programs in it, beginner, intermediate, elite, or beginner, intermediate, advanced. Then I, along with Dr. Quinn, Max Ada, Dr. Mike, Dr. James, will be in on Long Island. I've been corrected on that many times. Next Sunday, August 19th, for the Performance Summit. You can still sign up for that. Learn a ton of great stuff all in one day. Subscribe to the Juggernaut YouTube. Five, six videos a week. Trying to, trying to help you get better. Trying to provide you with resources and knowledge to improve as a lifter and, and coach trying to do it in an entertaining manner as well throw in a little history at you here and there and uh subscribe to the jug life podcast new episodes every tuesday you can find that on youtube itunes stitcher iHeartRadio, spotify and the juglife.com and i have another podcast now uh called the big ugly podcast ironic i know because i'm so handsome and that one covers Football, basketball, UFC, um, as some people have phrased it to me, sports people care about, but uh, just different sports than we talk about most of the time on, uh, on The Jug Life. So go subscribe to that for me as well. I've been putting some of the episodes up on The, on the Jug Life feed, but it also has its own uh, podcast feed on iTunes and Spotify, iHeartRadio, all those same places. So this was Beers with Chad. Thanks for watching or listening, and we'll see you next week.